Hey guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. I hope you're all enjoying the market taking a little bit of a tumble. I know that causes some concern for some people, but I tend to see it as a buying opportunity to get stocks at a nice cheap price. So today I want to talk to you about one of those companies whose stock is falling. I want to talk to you about a company who is producing rare earth oxides that are getting used in multiple industries, particularly the expanding EV uh, market, but also used in military applications, in alternative energy applications, and a number of others. The company's name is MP Materials. They went public via a SPAC deal in 2020. Now, what they produce is something called rare earth oxide. It's a little bit of a misnomer because rare earth um, elements are not really that rare, but they are a little difficult to process out of ore, so I guess that could make it a little bit rare. If you remember from your days in science class, the periodic table, there was a group of elements called the rare earth elements, and that's what we're talking about. They have a kind of a cool little thing on uh, the MP Materials website where you can click on one of these elements and it'll tell you what it gets used in. So for instance, lanthanum gets used in rechargeable batteries, night vision goggles, and camera and telescopic lenses. Think any of those things are being built right now? How about uh, cerium? We've got automotive catalysts, glass polishing. Uh, your iPhone, that glass, hmm, it's getting polished using a rare earth metal. And LED lighting. Uh, now, here's the big two for uh, MP Materials. Uh, Neo, I'm not even going to try to say that. We're just going to say NDPR. In fact, that's what they uh, call it in a lot of their um, marketing materials. NDPR gets used in electric vehicle motors. It gets used in mobile devices. It's getting used in wind turbines. Now, MP Materials gets its name from their mine, which is called Mountain Pass. It's located in Nevada. There's a picture of it for you. Their mine is really the only one in the Western Hemisphere that is producing rare earth oxides at any sort of a level that makes it have any impact on the available market. Now, most of these rare earth oxides are being mined out of uh, Asia, particularly they're processed in China. Right now, the company is just producing the rare earth oxide that they're bringing up out of their mine in Nevada, but they have future uh, growth potential and plans. So they plan to start separating the rare earth oxides on site at their mine in Nevada. That's, that is what they're calling stage two. Uh, they're doing the construction for the facilities to do that, and they plan to bring that online in 2022. That's going to bring them about $250 million of adjusted EBITDA for 2023. Their future, though, is what they're calling stage three. Stage three is that they plan to start producing the magnets from the NDPR themselves. So they will mine it, they will purify the oxide, and then they will produce the end product, all uh, within their own company. Now, the CEO of this company talked about Elon Musk saying, well, maybe they're going to go upstream and start mining lithium for their car batteries. In this case, MP Materials is going to go downstream take their mining product and turn it into a magnet. So why should we care about NDPR magnets? Well, they're found in about 90% of all EV motors. You can see the companies there who are going to be potentially using their future NDPR magnets. And the growth for magnets in electric vehicles is expected to grow at 15 times in the next decade. Now, the company is being deliberate about this. They're not going to try to rush this. Again, we're looking at 2022 when the refining and separation ability comes online. We're looking at about out into 2025 before really they get to where they can start making magnets. All right, electric vehicles, you're saying that's great, but how much uh, revenue is that going to drive? Well, we know that it's going to be a significant increase in the future, uh, but besides the electric motor, we're looking at other things like cooling and water and oil pumps and power, folding side mirrors and uh, steering wheel motors and braking systems, you name it, lots of different things on a motor vehicle. How about for clean energy? I mentioned the wind turbines. How about for the military? We're talking about guidance and control systems as well as communication and uh, electric motors there. And then if we look at digital technologies, uh, some of the things that would be using the rare earth oxides that they're bringing up, uh, the vibration motor, the LED screen, uh, speakers, glass polishing, and even the electric componentry. Now the company is trying to be environmentally conscious. Not only will the product that they produce have a nice effect on the environment, uh, they're saying more than two-thirds of the demand will come from carbon reduction technologies, 
but the company is also trying to be environmentally conscious in the way that they are producing their rare earth oxide and will be uh, refining it. So they have what they call a clean mine. Uh, in this case, there's not going to be any radioactive disposal to deal with. They also uh, recycle the water that they uh, use uh, for, for their tailings. 95% uh, of the water is getting recycled. They're producing what they call dry tailings, uh, so that eliminates the need to have a tailings dam. Uh, interestingly enough, the CEO said that you know their mine has such a nice uh, quality of the ore coming out of it. He said that the second best um, source of rare earth oxides in the Western Hemisphere is actually the tailings for their mine, the part that they haven't been able to extract. And then they plan to use a process where they can recycle uh, the chloralkali that they're going to be using to refine uh, their rare earth oxide. Now, why is this important? Well, supply chain is going to be a factor potentially in the future. We saw or, or we're seeing how supply chain is affecting uh, things like uh, chips right now. Uh, when this pandemic came on, there were chip plants that weren't producing chips, and now we're, we're starting to see the result of that. I saw even today that Chevy was closing down one of their plants because they don't have the chips uh, to do it. So supply chain for the United States when it comes to being able to produce these magnets may in the future be critical. And uh, this company could ha have a very nice uh, moat when it comes to supply chain within the United States for producing NDPR magnets. The company isn't profitable yet, but some of the analyst estimates that I saw said that they could become profitable by as early as 12 months, or that could project out into uh, potentially three years. I think a lot of that depends upon whether the price of rare earth oxides remains elevated like it is right now. Now, how's the stock price looking for MP materials? Well, you can see that it's taken a little bit of a dip. It was kind of funny. It, just last week, it took a big jump after their fourth quarter earnings call particularly when all of the uh, fourth quarter results got reported because the fourth quarter was so tremendous with that sudden increase in the price of rare earth oxides. Uh, it's come down now. It was up at, uh, what, 40, 49 uh, just a little bit ago. It's back down to 33. So I, and this is where I'm buying it. I already had some of it before, uh, but this is a chance to jump on board again. Now, why has this stock taken a sudden downturn? Well, two factors may be something that happened earlier this week. MP Materials uh, acknowledged that one of the uh, early shareholders in that whole SPAC deal is going to be selling their shares. Uh, it, this, they're calling it a secondary offering, but it's not going to increase the number of shares available. So that's important to know. There's no dilution going on with this. People get concerned when they hear about insiders selling their shares. Oh my gosh, why would an insider want to share if this is such a great company? A lot of these people get in on SPAC deals, I think, are not necessarily in it for the long term on this company. They're in it to make money. And the share price on this has gone up tremendously from when uh, the initial SPAC took place. And of course, then they add in some pipeline investors, etc. Those companies are in this to make money, and the stock price was at a nice uh, level, and they saw it as a time, in my opinion, uh, to make some money. That's why they're there. Now, what was one of the other reasons why this share price went down? The company announced that they were selling a bond, about $600 million worth of bond, but the bond is potentially convertible into stock. Now, that could uh, cause some stock dilution, but we need to think about this. The owners of the bond are not going to convert that into stocks unless the stock goes up significantly and they then will make more money by the stock than they will by the coupon on the bond that they're selling. So that's not a bad thing. If the stock price goes up, yeah, there may be a little bit of dilution, but hey, you know, that's happy for all the stockholders as well. Our stock price is up. I see this as a buying opportunity. If we go to Simply Wall Street, the analysts there are saying, that the forecasted annual earnings growth is 80.6%, uh, with the industry uh, being 15.2% and the general market being 18.9%. Not only that, but they're uh, forecasting that the company will have annual revenue growth of about 26% versus the industry being right around 6%. So companies that are losing money, it can get a little difficult to try to figure out their value. One way to do that is by earnings per share. Uh, if the company 
is to become profitable this year, we're looking at about 40 cents per share, earnings per share. And in 2023, there are some predictions saying uh, that they could be earning $1.33 per share. Well, uh, when the price was up higher, that was going to be about uh, 33 times that earnings per share. At its current price, we're looking at more like 25 times a future earnings per share of $1.33. And if this gets down in the uh, $25 range, which quite honestly, I hope it doesn't go quite that low, but if this gets down in the $25 range, well, then we're looking at about 18 times earnings per share. So what's my take on this? I have bought some more shares. Uh, if it goes a little lower, I'm going to continue to buy some more. And knowing that this company has a plan uh, for future growth um, and becoming the supply chain for NDPR magnets within the United States and potentially the Western Hemisphere, uh, I think they are a, a solid company. Really, the only thing that can derail them would be that they run out of materials. Uh, based on what I saw, uh, you know, they were producing about 37,000 metric tons, and they're estimating that they have something like 950,000 metric tons of material there at their mine. Uh, they have a, a, still a number of years before they're ever going to run out of that. But another thing is, you know, the CEO talked about the tailings. And I think as uh, science improves over the next, you know, who knows, a decade or so, their tailings potentially uh, could become a vast resource again for the rare earth oxides that pr they're producing. So they still may be able to uh, extend the life of this mine significantly. All right, that's it for MP Materials. Let me just put in a plug for a company called Unum. Uh, UNUM. Nobody's going to watch a, a video about them. Uh, the people on StockTwits watching it are almost nobody. But UNUM is an insurance company. They particularly uh, do insurance benefits for uh, large corporations or even smaller uh, people, I'm sure, as well. But they have 55 of the Fortune 100 companies. So they do things like the disability insurance, the group life insurance, um, all sorts of little things that when a business is putting people back to work and people have uh, seen how uh, financially fragile things can be, particularly during a pandemic, they may be more likely to be buying some of these insurance products. The other reason Unum is going to grow is uh, interest rates are going up, and when interest rates go up, insurance companies do better. So take a look at Unum as well. I'm not going to make a whole video about them because, again, nobody's going to watch it. That's it. Uh, I hope you have a great day, and until next time, enjoy your investing.